Well, I really didn't want to have to make a video about this, but this needs to be addressed. Because this is another situation of lawless New York City at its finest. I was able to get word from Andy Quinto, along with Cuomo Corruption, that uh, we had this happen. Yes, that's right. Mentally ill person using a knife trying to cut open an accordion bus. And I'll show you what the model is later on in this video because we're going to get to the Twitter clips from the user at VXCaitlin. And uh, thanks to her for pointing this out there because... This is now going to get old. This is probably viral by now. If it's not, then I don't know. Because I'm, I'm just distraught. I'm just distraught that I'm literally seeing Manhattan get torn down like this. And again, this is coming from somebody who is a, who is a lifelong New Yorker, who is a millennial, and has seen New York in its strong days in the 90s and 2000s when I was a kid. Okay. I literally do not recognize Manhattan right now. Everything I know about Manhattan is gone. I'm sorry for rambling, but Second Avenue and Delhi moved, which that's one thing. I'm, I'm sorry to bring that up randomly. Ray Berry is closed. And now I have to deal with these mentally ill people all over the place, and now they're being reported. And in case you don't know what Ray Berry's pizza was, we have one in Fresh Metals too, but the main location was in Manhattan. But... Oh, and Bruce's was in Manhattan, too, so... As I said, I'm not recognizing the borough that... Literally, literally, I tell people, Manhattan's like my second borough from home. Like, it's still is to this day. I love Manhattan, but lately Manhattan's going against me. And and that's not fair. It really isn't. So, let's, let's read on. Video shows a man clinging to the top of an MTA bus near Union Square, stopping at the bus with something being yanked down and being restrained by New Yorkers. The crowd yelled that the man had a knife. Several NYPD officers then arrived on scene. A witness to shared video of PIX11 said the man blocked the M15, which was heading south towards South Ferry, so the driver told the man to move. He started up slicing up the bus acting crazy the witness tweeted NYCT subway actually replied to the tweets and of course cops are not going to give any information because again that's not important I don't think that's important so the video is the most important thing so let's watch the videos I've censored out the audio and uh, we'll get to what bus was involved in just a second Yeah. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> so you clearly saw the video it was disgusting what um what happened but we're gonna get into more details about what bus route was involved and where this bus originally came from so pretty much this is the depot that um, is responsible for running the M15 uh, select bus so this depot Mother Clara Hall is located in Harlem 721 Lenox Avenue uh, bounded by Lenox Avenue 7th Avenue and 146 147th Street in Manhattan and of course, it's by the Harlem 148th Street South Subway Station. This three-story structure has capacity for 150 buses. This depot is named for uh, humanitarian Clara Hall. And again, I know this depot very well because this also serves the M7 route that goes along uh, 6th Avenue in Midtown. And uh, once again, this runs the M15 because I know for a fact... Uh, Manhattanville, they run the M5 route, so that's why, I, again, and again, I, I've ridden the bus, I've only ridden, again, the only bus routes I've ridden in Manhattan are the M5 and the M7, just to get on, just to get on 6th Avenue, because it was cheaper, and you want to take a taxi, take a taxi, yeah, get ripped off by those yellow caps, you break, uh, don't, don't get me started on them. So anyhow, um, the number you saw um, was 1237, and I'll zoom in, so again, any mobile phone viewers, you can see this for yourself, so let's just be careful not to scroll down. See, I scrolled down, and I lost it. I lost it. I do apologize. So, the uh, bus involved was a 2010 Nova Bus LFS Arctic, and uh, this is an articulated bus, and again, I know this bus very well, because... I've tried recently, you know, trying to get a lot of these LFSs. And I'm trying to do future videos where I film from the back window. Okay, I know a lot of people do Long Island Railroad, but I want to film from the back window in the future because, you know, it's an interesting experience. Sure, the New York City bus logo was there, but if they could remove it. That would be great because that would be excellent for us bus fanners to get that back view. But anyhow, um, 1237... 50 buses are uh, in service, and unfortunately, this poor bus didn't deserve what was coming towards it. It was a accordion, and again, these buses are only, what, nine years old, and they got tortured? It, completely unfair. Completely unfair. So, now I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you this. So, this was... A schedule I was able to find of the M15 bus which we're not going to read but I want to show you how you know agonizing this route is so pretty much this is a route that goes from Allen Street by 1st and 2nd by Houston and what's very unfortunate about this route is it's a long route you're coming all the way from Harlem okay so you have to come all the way from Harlem by 126th Street where the bus route starts and ends then you gotta go all the way down and thankfully you know gets to all the major bus routes in Manhattan that's the good thing I know this goes by the M86 which the M86 by 1st Avenue you know you go by this route guess what you actually go by the M31 on uh, I think it's York Avenue yeah it's York Avenue I forget where the other street is by Carl Schultz because there's First Avenue and then there's another block that you have to walk to get to it. But anyhow, look how agonizing this route is. All the way to South Ferry. You know how agonizing this route is? You know how agonizing this route is? And then, especially how it links up to the L train. So, not enough the driver has to deal with agonizing route to deal with a mentally ill person is just getting a whole lot worse and I gotta show you all what I saw on Union Turnpike today while I was waiting for the 88 to Elmhurst because literally we're getting so many Creedmoor vagrants and that's what they are 
All right, they should be locked up for the locked up and not let out during the day. I don't know why they let out. Sorry to call Creed more out, but I'm going to show you how disturbing it, the Union Turnpike and Springfield Boulevard's getting. It's bad enough we had to fight there a couple weeks ago. I'm not going to talk about it. But let me just show you how bad things are getting. And then we're going to talk about, again, speaking up and doing what those people did. I'm going to, I'm going to, make, I'm going to end the video on that point. So just watch and see what happened today while I was waiting for the 88 to Elmhurst. Guess what, folks? We got a vagrant. Here he is, Union Turnpike and Springfield Boulevard. Yep. I'm telling you, this area, this area is just declassified because they want to dump everything in Queens. Look at this guy. He's not even trusted for the weather. Clearly tell he's homeless. So once again, you see there, a vagrant. A vagrant! Somebody who, who doesn't belong out in the streets. Again, that guy looked mentally ill. He looked mentally ill. Okay? Alright? He wasn't dressed for the weather. I said that in the video. And it's just disgusting what I have to see. Especially, the, the, they're, they're always targeting Jamaica. Because again, Jamaica is a minority community. It's not lily white like Little Necker Douglaston. So they're going to dump the problems there. That's what's going to happen. And recently there was a burglary in Little Neck Douglas, and I'm not going to get into it. But, you know, the problems are going to spread everywhere. Okay? And I also mentioned, I, I couldn't film because the guy was getting too close to me. But I was waiting for the Q30 bus on Archer Avenue back on Tuesday. And it's mentally ill guy. He, he's jumping all over the place. He's acting crazy. He He's literally annoying the other people besides me who were waiting for the Q30, Q31. And then, shameful on NYCT to not tell people. And again, the drivers should be telling the passengers. They haven't done this in weeks that the, that the routes detour due to, you know, what I did. You can thank me again for getting the 3031 detour in Queens along the Q17 route. You know, making sure that we prevent congestion. And again, we can't always prevent congestion. I know I'm rambling on. But again, I'm not seeing things get any better here in the city. I'm not. All right? And I'm not seeing it getting better either in Long Island either. Or Pine Power Allies videos. But I have mind battle on the city. And those people, I'm going to commemorate them. They deserve a big congratulations. Okay? They deserve a big congratulations for taking a stand. Because again, you know what the police, the police are too politically correct. They don't want to do their jobs anymore. When Giuliani and Bloomberg were the mayor, they used to be able to do whatever they want. They wanted to beat the crap out of someone, they used to do that. I was fine with it. You know, the I used to see crazy people in Manhattan. Like, not all the time, but when Giuliani and Bloomberg, when, they, when somebody acted all rational... They just kicked the guy. They kicked the living crap out of the guy. And now they're afraid to do it. They don't want to do it anymore. They're too afraid that, oh, we make you pierced by little Jamie Neal. Sorry to call him out, but his police department should should know better. But again, no, he's afraid that he could lose his job and if something happens, de Blasio could terminate him. So that's why... Literally, James O'Neill has been a cop for like 30-something years. And, and again, I'm sorry to ramble on. I'm sorry to ramble on. Even though, again, I have the New York City skyline. But we're in a fight for our city, folks. And I don't want to hear, Oh, we don't see vagrants on Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn. We don't see them in Park Slope. They're not hanging around Prospect Park. They're not hanging around Grand Army Plaza because again, that's the Blasio space. That's why he that's why you don't see vagrants there. That's why I think they target those areas. Brooklyn those areas in Brooklyn are heavily favored towards the Blasio's group. Always have, always will be. Just like how Lower Manhattan, that's another thing. Why don't you see any vagrants by Wall Street or the World Trade Center? Oh, 
That's why, because de Blasio cares about Lauren Manhattan. That's his base, too. Again, he wants to dump him all over Midtown, and that's his job. That's why you see more homeless people in Midtown. And, and same here in Queens. They're, they're all over the place. Sometimes they even come to Fresh Meadows. I think I got it on Snapchat like a year or two ago. That homeless person was right in front of the church on 188 and 73rd Avenue. So again, the problems are spreading. And they're even impacting our parks. That The homeless person that still hangs around Cunningham Park, he's still there. I saw a stuff by the restroom today when I was on the 88 to Elmhurst. So I'm not making this stuff up, folks. We got to start... We gotta start documenting. We gotta start showing the world what's happening here in New York City. We are facing a crisis. And again, that user, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her name out right now. I have her name if I can get it up. V X Caitlin, K A T E L Y N. We're in a fight for our battle right now. We need to take action on our own if it keeps getting worse. We have to start being our own representation. If we see something, we have to do something. That's what Bloomberg told us to do. Alright? I'm glad those people remember those words Bloomberg said. Because right now people aren't using them. People are too afraid. People people are just so afraid to not be politically correct that they're literally gonna not they're literally gonna let crime go out of hand. We can't treat this like a politically correct issue anymore. We have to start waking up. We have to go back to the Giuliani Bloomberg safe era we had in the city. Sorry to, again, get all emotional about this. We're in a fight right now. We must take a stand. I love this city. I was born and raised here. I don't want to leave Queens anytime soon. I'm desperate to do anything I can to stay here. But again, if it keeps getting worse, I'm really thinking of getting the hell out of here if it keeps if it keeps getting worse. If it keeps getting worse in the next I'd say two to three years, I may have to go out of here. I may have to go somewhere safe. And, and, and learn a new lifestyle if it keeps getting worse. So let's hope that. Our city can be saved. We can be our own representation. We can do what's right. We can bring back common sense. Because again, political correctness is just ruining common sense these days. I'm sorry to say it, but if YouTube's gonna demonetize this video, I don't care at this point. So that, I'm gonna wrap it all up over our glorious New York City skyline. Skyline that I love. Skyline that I could always wish and see and die out with. Still hope I can, you know? And again, this is coming from a native New Yorker. I love it, I don't wanna leave it. Thank you all for watching and once again remember, the fight continues.